Hey everyone, today we're going to create a Spring Boot application that has a controller which is able to handle sorting and pagination. So first of all we're here with the Spring Initializer. We're going to create a Maven project using Java and we're just going to call the Artifact Library. We're going to add three dependencies. So we need Spring Web, we need JPA and we need H2 because we're going to use an in-memory database. If you're using a database like uh, Postgres or even a NoSQL database, that should, this should all work the same though. So we're going to generate this project and that's going to give us our zip file. And we're just going to drag that to our desktop and unzip it. Cool. So now from my terminal, I'm going to move inside that directory. I'm going to open it in my IDE. So first of all, we're just going to run the application to ensure that it's working OK before we add anything. And we can see it's running OK. So this is a library and the domain we're going to be working in today is going to be books. So we're going to create a new package called book. And inside that package, we're going to create some files, some classes. So first of all, we're going to just create the entity itself, which is a class called book. Um, then we're going to create another Java class, which is book controller, because we're going to need a rest controller for that. And then we need book repository. If I was creating a real project, I would also have a service, which would be in between the controller and the repository, and it would be able to handle some business logic. But for this simple example, we're just going to go with this, um, these three classes. And these are all the classes that we need. So now inside resources, uh, we're going to create a file called data.sql. And this file is going to be used to seed our in-memory database with some data whenever it starts up. So this is going to be useful. We're not going to need to create the data once the application starts. It's going to be there in our database um, anytime it starts up. So let's start off defining the entity, because then we'll be able to insert some data using this data.sql file. So first of all, for this book, we're going to have to annotate it with the entity annotation. And now we need some fields. So first of all, we're going to have a field which is private long ID. And this is just our identifier. And we're going to tag this with ID. And we're going to use a generated value for this. So this is going to be automatically generated for us. And we're just going to use a strategy with the generation type of identity. So that's our first field, ID. We're going to have another field then, which is a string. And this is just going to be a title for our book, um, for each book. So that's we're going to need that. So once we have this, um, we're going to have to create some getters and setters. So we should be able to do that here. Uh, create getter and setter for ID. And let's do the same for a title like that. So that's created our getters and our setters. You could use something like lambok, which would mean you wouldn't need this boilerplate code, but I like I like doing this myself. So now we have a book which has an ID and a title. Um, now we're ready to populate our database with these. So we're able to do this here in this data.sql file. We're able to write just raw SQL here. So first of all, we're just going to have insert into book and book is the table name because our entity is also called book um, but note that it is all lowercase and it's going to have a title and then we're just going to insert the values so let's create a book first of all let's call it to kill a mockingbird and let's let's insert a couple of books let's go with Let's give them all names. So I'm just going to name all these now. I'm going to speed up the video because you don't need to watch this. So I've just inserted seven different books here. Um, and note that I haven't put them in alphabetical order or anything. For example, the last book is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And I did this purposely just to so show how this sorting works. Um, so we'll be able to see that because these are in not non-alphabetical non order or anything. Um, 
So now let's go with our repository. Um, so this is going to be, first of all, it's not going to be a class. It's going to be an interface book repository, and it's going to extend JPA repository. Like that. Um, and inside here, we know we're going to have a book, and it has an ID of type long. So this is our book repository. And we're not going to need to add any of our own methods here because we're just going to be using the find all that's given to us by default um, from this interface. We also need to annotate this with repository. And that's a repository finished. So the last thing we need to do is our controller. Um, so first of all, let's do the annotation. So this is going to be a REST controller. And it's going to have a request mapping to forward slash books. So this is the endpoint that we're defining for this controller. So this controller is going to need to interact with our repository. As I said before, normally I would use a service here, but because this is just a small proof of concept, uh, we're just going to go straight to the repository. So we're going to auto wire that um, with our book repository. So that's going to give us our book repository for free. Um, and now we're going to need our endpoint. So let's just go with a get mapping like that. And let's start off just with a list of book, list of books. Um, and let's call this function get books. And let's import that. So first of all, let's just return book repository dot find all just to show you how this works. Um, so now this is running. If I go to localhost 8084 slash books, we can see we get all of our seven books here. And this is working kind of like magic um, because our data.sql file is inserting these into our H2 in-memory database. And then our controller is able to fetch them from our repository like that. So we can see here, it's just returning all seven books. We have no way here um, by passing in parameters to do sorting or, or pagination or anything like that. This is just a simple API endpoint that will get us all of our books. So if we had 10,000 books here, it would return all 10,000. Um, so this, this wouldn't scale very well. So now we want to give the user of our API the option to be able to sort these and also use pagination. So first of all, let's go with sorting. So let's do at request param and let's give it an optional value, which is a string. And let's just say it's sort by. Okay, so this is gonna use a, a request parameter, sort by, which is an optional string. So inside here now, inside the find all, we should be able to check what we can pass in. Um, so we can see we're able to pass in a sort if we want to. So let's do that. Let's do sort uh, dot direction. And we're going to go dot ascending. This is just going to go in ascending sorting order. And let's just use sort by. But if this is not present, so if no, somebody doesn't pass in this parameter because it's an optional, we're able to use this or else method. So if sort isn't present, we're just going to sort by the ID and this will, um, this will give it to us like that. So this is the sorting. Um, now we're going to go with the pagination. So here, if I use at request param again, and again, optional, and I go integer and this is called page, then we're going to be able to use the page inside the find all as well. So let's just put this in its own line. And let's say page dot or else zero. So this is just saying if they don't pass in the page value, just use the page of, of zero. And we're going to make our pages uh, five. And this is going to ask us to convert this to return a page of books instead. And find all doesn't actually take all of these as a parameter. Instead, it takes a page request. So we just need to pass in page request and we want to give page request these parameters instead. And we're using the dot off method on that. So now this is going to pass in a page request to the find all. 
Um, these are the parameters that we're using for that page request. So if you can remember, we used a page and a sort by. Uh, if we start this again, we should be able to use these request parameters. So first of all, let's just see the default behavior of our API. So if we just go to localhost 8080s forward slash books, it's going to return a bunch of other things now. So we can see this, we're getting this pageable back as well. And this is because our API endpoint is no longer returning just a list of books. It's returning a page um, of books. So we can see that we get all this, this extra stuff as well. And we get information which is quite useful, like the total elements, which is seven. We can see we're only getting five back here because we've defined our page size as five. And because we haven't passed in a page value here as a request parameter, it's default in the page to zero. So we're getting the first five back. And as we can see, these aren't sorted or anything. Um, okay, so now we want to pass in the sort by, and we want to sort by the title. So now we can see it's no, it's no longer sorting by the ID because we're actually getting the, the one with the ID of seven back first, and that's because it begins with an A. So this is sorting them in alphabetical order, which is useful. And we can see the IDs here are, are kind of in reverse order almost. So that's cool, that's this sort by. And now we want to try the page as well. And by default, we're getting page zero. So let's just see if we do page zero, we're gonna get that as well. But if we want to look at page one, we can pass in the page as one as a request parameter. And we can see then we get the final two that we weren't getting before because there was seven altogether. So this is a simple example of how to use pagination and sorting uh, in your API with Spring Boot. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.